Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, it's been a wonderful uh, weekend for me and uh, the weather was good out here. Uh, but as you know, uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, it's very slow moving and there are hardly any topics of genomics. Uh, so I always find it a challenge to have any video out on the weekend. Uh, but today, uh, a story headline caught my eye and I thought you guys would be interested in it because you're all genomics investors. So the headline reads that scientists rego retinal cell in the lab using nanotechnology. It seems researchers have successfully recruited nanotechnology to help regrow retinal cells. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Macular degeneration is a form of central vision loss which has massive social mobility and uh, mental consequences for anyone who suffers from it and it's growing in prevalence. In fact, uh, I get tested every other year uh, by my ophthalmologist for uh, macular degeneration. So they give something to relax my eyes and then they take a photograph of sorts and um, I have to sit in the clinic for half an hour before I'm able to go out because it's disorienting. <laughs> And uh, at the end of that, they uh, show me the diagrams and they say, they show me the pictures that they have taken of my retina and they give me all clear saying that, okay, there is no uh, uh, degeneration out here. So uh, this is a problem. Probably you, you are also getting screened every uh, other year for this. Our bodies are unable to grow and replace retinal pigment cells once they start dying. So scientists have been uh, exploring alternative methods to replace them and the membrane within which they sit. And um, that is uh, uh, this biochemist called uh, Barbara uh, Pearsonik, and she works in uh, Anglia Ruskin University. And she says that uh, using new techniques, the cell line, uh, which is basically the retinal pigment cell, has been grown and uh, shown to thrive in a 3D environment provided by uh, scaffoldings. The scaffolding she is referring to was developed by Nottingham Trent University biomedical uh, scientist uh, Biola uh, Egbona and uh, his colleagues uh, who fabricated 3D scaffolds with polymer um, nanofibers and coated them with a steroid to reduce the inflammation. They used a technique called uh, electro spinning, uh, which is basically a pioneering technique uh, that produces nanometer wide fibers. Uh, they do this by uh, squirting uh, molten polymer through a high voltage field to keep the scaffolding sufficiently thin. The polyacrinonitrile uh, polymer they use functions to provide mechanical strength to the scaffolding, while the jeffermine polymer they use in the scaffolding uh, helps to attract water, essentially, uh, essentially allowing the synthetic scaffolding to act as a membrane. The water attracting ability of the material is what helps the cells bind to the scaffolding and also encourages their growth. The team found that if the effect was too strong, then the cell death occurred. Through various uh, trials and combinations, the team finally hit upon the formulation that seems to be just right as the system increased the growth and longevity of the retinal uh, lab cells and kept them viable for at least 150 days. So that is really amazing. As per uh, biochemist Barbara, uh, this research has uh, demonstrated for the first time that nanofiber scaffoldings uh, treated with uh, anti-inflammatory substance uh, can uh, actually enhance growth, differentiation, and functionality of retinal pigment epithelial cells. It should be noted that previous attempts have used collagen and cellulose to create a similar scaffold, but uh, Egbovan and team believe that Synthetic option will be easier to make uh, compatible with our immune system and simpler to modify. The new study has uh, demonstrated that the method used to keep the uh, required uh, single layer of uh, retinal cells healthy, uh, producing biomarkers that indicate they are functioning more naturally than what has been found when they grow on other mediums. So, uh, however, there's still a lot we don't know about how viable this approach will be for treating human patients with macular degeneration. As per uh, Egbo Vaughan and his colleagues, research is still needed to address the questions of biocompatibility with human tissues, as there's a massive difference between growing cells in vitro and having a functioning tissue uh, substitute within a body. 
other research in this area is uh, already investigating whether the grown cells, uh, the cells that are grown in the labs, can be plugged back uh, into other retinal cell types to form functioning units of tissue within the body. Another tactic involves uh, activating cells already in human eye tissues that regenerate retinal cells in other animals. So uh, the team's next step now is going to be to investigate the orientation of the cells, which is important for ensuring that the cell maintain a good healthy blood supply uh, before they can be considered for uh, testing inside a living system. The research was published in a, a publication called Materials and Design. Uh, I have seen this uh, particular, the, whatever information I have in this video has been uh, taken from the website www.sciencedirect.com. Uh, in case you are interested, I'll put the link in the uh, description below. So there are two uh, articles that I had a look at. I'll put both the links uh, in the description below so you can go and have a look and uh, read for yourself. The global 3D cell culture market size is expected to reach $3.2 billion by 2023, raising at a market growth of around 15.4% compounded annually uh, during the forecast period. Uh, here we are not talking about uh, retinal pigment cells alone. A 3D cell culture in this case is an artificial environment that allows biological cells to grow uh, or communicate with their surroundings in three dimension. A 3D cell culture as opposed to 2D surroundings uh, such as a petri, uh, petri dish plate uh, permits the cells to uh, cells in vitro to develop in all direction as they would in vivo. Uh, typically these three dimensional cultures are cultivated in bioreactors uh, which are um, tiny capsules in which cells can form spiroids or 3D cell colonies and cells thus grown are used to investigate cellular response to pharmaceutical uh, pharmacological substances and uh, such 3D cell cultures can be categorized as scaffold based like the one that I described which is the 3D retinal cell uh, scaffold free uh, and uh, microfluids uh, based or magnetic and bioprinted and uh, all of these find application in pharmaceuticals uh, research uh, laboratories and cosmetic industry there may be other applications as well which I am not aware of but uh, generally these are the areas where they are being used because it's much more ethical especially in cosmetic industry it can help them avoid animal uh, animal based research uh, and prevent cruelty to animals so that's uh, the scoop my friends and um, while we are laser focused on uh, genomic uh, industry there are other technologies that are growing uh, side by side and which are also going to have uh, major uh, implications for uh, humankind and also uh, medicine in the future. I, I suspect this is one of them. With that, my friends, I'd like to end this video. I hope you had a great weekend and I wish you a very, very good Monday and a happy trading week. Bye for now.